proud to serve Abilene in the big country with coverage you can count on. This is KTAB News Daybreak. Good morning and welcome to KTAB Daybreak. I'm Dustin Tatro. An Abilene man was arrested after leading police on a chase in West Abilene yesterday afternoon. Abilene police attempted to stop Marlon Dante Harness after they observed him speeding in a school zone on South 7th, but Harness fled in his vehicle. Harness then exited his vehicle and ran for several blocks. An APD canine officer located the subject hiding in a dumpster, and a local youth pastor was there when it all happened. I see this guy come running around the corner, and I'm like, what's he running for? Where is he going? But he just straight up opens up this dumpster right here and jumps inside. They, should, they get a dog unit in here. It jumps in that dumpster and pulls him out by the ankles. It was the best thing I have seen all week. And Harness was charged with the felony offense of evading detention with a motor vehicle and with evading detention on foot. He has since been released from the Taylor County Jail on bond. A local congregation is taking the charge, Go Ye Into All the World, from the Gospel of Mark seriously. Members of St. Paul United Methodist Church in downtown Abilene are traveling on a mission trip to Costa Rica at the beginning of August. Our model or our mission here at St. Paul is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And we spend a lot of time and a lot of effort in our local community and in the state. And so it gives us an opportunity to go outside of the country and to share our faith with others. Um, in Costa Rica, they have places that have already been identified where they're helping people to share faith. And so we chose that location. St. Paul staff expect around 20 members to ultimately make the trip to Costa Rica to help oppressed people living in that nation. Pastor Hopkins told us some ways in which the team will help include building living quarters for incoming volunteers and adding education facilities to an existing church. This is to be St. Paul's first international mission trip in over five years. A new restaurant that will serve upscale Mextex cuisine with a twist is opening soon in South Abilene. Miguel's Mextex Cafe, opening at 3001 South Danville, has announced they are now hiring. The new venture has a presence on Facebook and at miguelsmextex.com. The culinary experience there will be driven by executive chef Joel Trollblood, former owner of Vonterra Blue and the Gypsy Blue Mobile Food Circus of Clyde. Thank you for joining us for KTAB Daybreak. For more information on these and other stories, please visit our webpage at bigcountryhomepage.com. We'll have a complete look at developing news and weather at noon on KTAB Noon Tab. Make this a great Monday. Thanks, Ron. Recently, several new homes have been built in the Hamby community just northeast of Abilene. Businesses and other new construction have seen the city of Abilene's north side frontier inch ever closer to the city limits just a few hundred yards north, towards an area protected by a small but dedicated volunteer fire department. We reached out to Hamby Fire and Rescue to find out how the department has been working to enhance their emergency services capabilities. <laughs> Hamby Fire Rescue, located just northeast of Abilene on Highway 351, is a department with such a unique coverage area that it contains portions of four different counties. Over the most recent few years, however, firefighters here have noticed newly constructed homes appearing in the area, one dominated by rough brush, as well as the gradual northward expansion of commercial properties approaching the city limits. Beyond that, coverage is Hamby's responsibility. We started the Hammy Volunteer Fire Department about 40 years ago. We started with nothing, and what you see and what you get into nowadays is what has built up over a long period of years with the help of Texas Forest Service and with the help of the citizens. One way the department continues to build up is with the recent delivery of a new Wildland engine built by Steel Fire Apparatus in Haskell. The apparatus is designed specifically to work within the Wildland Urban Interface, that is, areas where population growth extends into rural areas where wildfires pose greater danger. 
Got a 1500 gallon tank on it. It's got a whole bunch of lines on it used for smaller little grass fires around, so like simple little fires to be able to put out. But also it has hard lines on it to be able to put out structure fires if needed a second out. The new Wildland engine is Hamby's first apparatus to allow for five firefighters to travel safely to a scene in one vehicle. Plus, they can apply water from remote nozzles controlled from the cab. Brush 3, along with two other new brush trucks, has allowed Hamby Fire to retire two older vehicles, one a 1968 model and the other a 1984. The department has beefed up its EMS first responder program as well. Connect electrodes. We have a good number of members that are well trained and well versed in medical and fire suppression. But Chief Watson tells me they have no plans to stop building their capabilities anytime soon. We're building the fire department to be a successful and dependable fire department because of the growth of the community and the people that we have here. And while the only fire hydrants available to Hamby Fire are those at the Abilene city limits, they do have a unique way to deliver water. Not one, but two large tanker trucks that together can transport over 10,000 gallons of water for firefighting to a scene. All of these improvements might ultimately have positive impact on home insurance rates for Hamby residents. Live in the studio, I'm Dustin Tatro, KTAB News. Do you or an organization you work with use 15 passenger vans like this one to transport passengers? Most churches, daycares, senior adult facilities, and even the Abilene Independent School District do so. But at what possible risk? After a rash of tragic accidents across the country over the past several years, the National Transportation Safety Board has released a report on the dangers of using these types of vehicles. The report says that 50% of vans involved in more than 1,500 fatal accidents rolled over and that a full load increases rollover risk by three times. The NTSB found that many of these vans remain parked for extended periods of time, leading to severe tire deterioration. Many of the fatal accidents occurred when overloaded vehicles on compromised tires experienced blowouts at highway speeds. Most fatalities occurred when unbelted riders were thrown through the large side windows. The best and most effective solution is to consider total replacement of these 15 passenger vans with more stable vehicles such as buses and Suburbans. However, manufacturers have recently been taking greater safety initiative by incorporating more standard safety features in late model vans such as electronic stability control, side impact airbags, and a special side glass that helps prevent passengers from being ejected in rollover collisions. The NTSB also has released a list of ideas for current owners that should help these vans be safer and experience less risk of rollover. They say it is critical to follow a proper maintenance regimen, particularly in focus to tire condition and inflation, and to remove the rearmost seat from the van for greater stability. Of course, with 15 passenger vans and any vehicle, the most important safety tactic that can be done is to insist that all passengers Buckle up. Reporting in Abilene, Dustin Tatro, KTAB News. With coverage you can count on, here are today's top headlines from KTAB News. Fire caused a lot of damage to a North Abilene home, and the person who lived there had to escape from the flames. Firefighters rushed out to the house on East North 10th Street near Washington Boulevard early Sunday morning. There was a lot of smoke coming from the house. The fire was in the attic. People who live nearby rushed outside to see what was going on when they heard all of the commotion. Investigators are working to determine how the fire started. Football fans gathered to watch yesterday's playoff game between the Dallas Cowboys and the Green Bay Packers. There is a lot of controversy over a ruling about a fourth quarter play in that game. Tony Romo threw a pass to Des Bryant that originally was ruled a catch, but officials reviewed the play and determined that pass was incomplete. 
The Packers then got enough first downs to run out the clock and win the game 26-21 over the Cowboys. With coverage you can count on, this is Dustin Tatro, KTAB News.